place for the Cavs, and the Cavs lost again last night, this time to a blazing hot Trail Blazers team who've won 11 straight. LeBron did his part, as usual, 35 points, 14 rebounds, 6 assists, but on the other side, Damian Lillard and C.J. McCollum combined for 53 points. So Cleveland has now lost 7 of 12 since the All-Star break. Here's LeBron James after the game. It's been a long time since I haven't played, uh, you know, with another All-Star, you know, on my team, you know, so, you know, having Kev out, you know, it's been uh, very, very challenging, obviously, for all of us, you know, uh, you know, Kev is, you know, big usage rate on our team, we get the ball when things get chaotic, we can throw it to him on a low, po uh, low post to get some things going, uh, but it's not just Kev, I mean, we missing double T as well, Rodney went back out again, um, so, you know, you, you take the... Obviously, you want to win every game, but my approach uh, doesn't change. It's easy. Let's talk about this team. Kevin Love's supposed to be back, what, next week? Yeah. So maybe next week? With, with February 20, or March 23rd, they think. It'll be yeah. a week from today. Anyway, how, how big a deal uh, are the Cavs' struggles right now without Kevin Love in there? I mean, they're huge. I mean, look at... I watched the start lineup last night when they came onto the court. I'm like, goodness gracious. Like, they're going to get pummeled inside. So it's not only Kevin Love. Kevin Love's scoring ability, Kevin Love's ability to be able to stretch the court. But, man, they're overall rebounding. And Tristan Thompson's out. So, it's, it, I mean, this injury on top of other injuries, like, they can't recover from this. Like, this is what I expect to see. The thing that I like the most is LeBron played as hard as he can play. He played offensively. He was very, very aggressive from the beginning of the game. That, that's all LeBron can do. Now, the rest of them, that's up to the organization. These are the players. Rodney Hood, right now, he's not an NBA starter, marginal NBA starter. Jeff Green, he's not supposed to be a starter. Cal Korver, he's not supposed to be a starter. And George Hill has been bad. All right, now you have J.R. Smith coming off the bench. He contributes three points in, 20, in 27 minutes. So there are so many things that I can complain about that, of course, they miss Kevin Love. And LeBron left Cleveland, left Cleveland the first time. Why? To play with all-stars to play with Chris Bosh, to play with Dwayne Wade. That team that he was on yesterday, that's the worst. And I've been saying this for a while. Man, that's the worst lineup I've seen LeBron with since the first time he was with the Cavs. Last night's lineup, was in they had no chance to win that game. The, the, the lineups that he's been playing with the last few games, because the one big man you left out that they were missing yesterday was Larry Nance. You're missing your first string center, your second string center, your first string power forward, which is why Ante Zizic, who was... A, no fault of his own, but a punchline on this show early because whenever we talked about the Kyrie trade, I would joke and say, and don't forget, Andre. the Cavs got on takes it. Yes. Like, he's now getting NBA minutes. Dude named John Holland, who I know he didn't think he was going to be actually playing in games right. because of the haircut he has. Like, he, he didn't think he'd be in a starring role. He's out there. So, like, the, this is the, the only thing I can compare it to recently for LeBron is the lineup he had in the NBA Finals against the Warriors the first time, when Kyrie got hurt, when Kevin Love got hurt, when Matthew Della Vadova was playing a starting, starring role. But at least then, JR was playing better. Shump was on the team. He was playing better. Like, there, you know what I mean? There were reasons to believe, like, okay, there are, there are some pieces here that make sense. I, what's going on right now with the Cavs that is so frustrating, I don't mind what happened in the front court because LeBron was great and you are missing your top three roca rotation front court guys. I will give them a pass on that. And if people are waking up or watching this right now, they probably didn't see the end of this game. LeBron pulled it within two with a couple minutes left. Like they, they were in this game against the hottest team in basketball. What bothers me is this. If the Cavs backcourt isn't going to score, can you guard? If you are, if Jr. If you're going to play 27 minutes and take three shots, can you not in those 27 minutes let C.J. McCollum or Dame Lillard, whoever you're checking, light you up? I know those are great players. Dame's a great player. C.J.'s a really good player. Like, the the only guard that played well was Jordan Clarkson, and I didn't even think he played that well defensively. Like, you cannot have the least productive backcourt in the NBA. You can't, and they've had it for months now. Well, we used to talk about Kevin Love's return. We'd say the question was, well, how is Kevin Love going to fit back into this rotation, right? How, where is he going to fit in? How are they going to be able to bring him back in? Now it seems like it's just LeBron and Kevin Love, and they're going to have to. Once he gets in, that's going to be the, the five that they're going, and that's going to be the rotation uh, that they're yes. going to put yeah. in. That's how and they start the season. But when they're you only going to have like a week or so, week and a half, two weeks until the playoffs start. Kevin Love is an established star. We we know what he can do. It, the, the question is not how does Kevin Love fit in. Kevin Love right. is a legitimate. He's going to get his. 
20. He's going to get his shots. But when you have Kevin Love there, what's not going to happen is you're not going to get out-rebounded 50 to 34. You're not going to get second chance points 20 to 4. So it's not a matter of fit. When you're an all-star, you get on the court, and the rest of the pieces, they fit around you. His ability to be able to score the basketball and LeBron James' comfort level with a player like Kevin Love goes through the roof. Man, I'm going to do something to you that you do to me sometimes, because I hadn't seen this. I hadn't seen that number. Say the second chance point stats again. Let's go 20 to 4 rebounds, and let's go 50 to 34. That's an outrage. That's a flat-out outrage to get. Uh, listen, second chance points 20 to 4 cannot happen. Not when, by the way, you're not on a second night of a back-to-back. -back. By the way, the guys out there for you should be trying to take advantage of these additional minutes. And not, by the way, when the best damn player in the world in year 15 announces to everyone early, we're here to play and to win tonight. No excuse that LeBron wasn't locked in. He, I mean, he's dunking from 14 feet out on Nurkic's head, and he's giving you 35, 14, 6, 3, and 2. Can, is it enough to ask George Hill, Rodney Hood, J.R. Smith to show up? Like, just show up. I, it, that, it's frustrating. And, and again, Portland's playing really well. Like, losing to Portland, there's no shame in it. No. But losing that way because right. of effort plays, 50 to 34 rebounds, 20 to 4 second chance points is, is and ridiculous. And you're seeing LeBron get frustrated. You saw him get frustrated with the head coach, Tyron oh, Lue, yeah. on the sideline, which is you see it sometimes. You don't see it that often. So, obviously, he's starting to feel this as well. We see it, Jenna. Oh, Did yeah. See it? No, he's getting angry. You sure you saw angry it? You saw it? He did it. Saw it. Coming up, do you think Eric Mangini saw it? That's all I really want to know. Well, he know. was locked into West Coast NBA last it's, night. It's Taco Friday. <laughs> he didn't even text me back. He's on next. Talking football. My people. <laughs> A dunk on you from 13. <laughs>